Good morning. <clears throat> Myself, Dr. Drubin Doshi, second year resident at GCS Medical College and uh, guided by Dr. Nikunj Desai, professor at the GCS Medical College. So my topic is MR imaging spectrum of intracranial infections in HIV positive patients. So my aims and objective is to study the imaging spectrum of intracranial infection, infections in HIV positive patients on MRI. Introduction. <laughs> HIV is a neurotropic virus that enters the cranial nerve system early in the course of infections. There are three stages in the HIV infection. First is HIV infection primary, second is latent disease, and third is AIDS. Uh, diseases of the central nervous system in the patient infected with the HIV results directly from the virus itself or from the variety of opportunistic agents. Up to 60% of the all patients with AIDS develop the uh, neurological complications. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> first manifestation of symptoms, symptomatic HIV infection is in 20 to 10 to 20% of the patient when the CD4 counts is false below the 200 cells. So, atypical manifestation may be seen due to layering on unmasking phenomenon. So, we can see HIV encephalitis. So, we, what we can see is AIDS, dementia complex is an HIV associated chronic neurologic neuro, neurodegenerative syndrome. The imaging findings of the AIDS, dementia complex are referred as a HIV encephalitis. So, in the typical MR, MRI, we can see there is a cortical atrophy with central predominance and ex vacuo ventricular dilatations, symmetrical patchy or confluent T2 and flare hyperintensities with periventricular or deep white matter, uh, frontal lobe predominant lesion, lesions and no enhancement of the mass effect. On MRI, we can see there is a, a T2 and a flare images shows the bilateral symmetrical periventricular hyperintensities with some dilatation of the bilateral frontal horns of the lateral ventricles. On contrast, M T1 and post contrast T1, we can see there is a no enhancement noted on T1. So the basically the uh, with Q1 history and uh, the MR findings, we can see there is a diagnosis of HIV encephalitis. So we here go to the second case. The second case is a uh, progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy (PML). Uh, PML is a progressive demyelinating disorder that results from the JC virus infection of oligodendrocytes. Though, so the MR findings that includes multifocal asymmetrical areas of T1 and T2 prolongation in the periventricular and subcortical white matter, involvement of subcortical U fibers, posterior fossa involvement in the one third of the cases, and a faint peripheral enhancement may be seen in a 10% of cases, and there may be seen a mass effect. But it is rare, 10, only 10% 10 in cases. So on the T2 and flare, we can see there is a bilateral diffuse asymmetrical, some uh, hyper intensities and uh, with subcortical involving the subcortical white matter. On the post contrast studies, we can see there is a uh, faint peripheral enhancement, faint peripheral enhancement. So, in the with the clinical, the clinical features, we can see there is a uh, the diagnosis as a progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. <clears throat> this is a T1 image, and it, it is post contrast T1 image. There is mild peripheral enhancement, but it's not clearly. But we can say with the clinical features that it must be this. So the next uh, disease is tox toxoplasmosis. Toxoplasmosis is caused by an obligate intracellular protozoa toxoplasma gondii. It's in MRI, we can see that the predilication of the basal ganglia, thalamus, corticomedullary junction in frontal and parietal lobes. Agents appear typically hypoindense to iso on T2-weighted images with surrounding vasogenic edema. So <clears throat> ring enhancement is noted in post-contrast studies and uh, enhancing eccentric nodule may be seen maybe it's noted. Uh, it is called a target sign. Uh, presence of a hemorrhage helps to differentiate from the lymphoma. 
so when t t2 and flare happen t2 and flare happened happy intensities is seen in the basal ganglia thalamus eye and gray white matter differentiation we can see it is by the arrow so in the dwi uh, we can see high signal intensity uh, rims and low signal signal, signal intensity centers in the lesion high signal signal in, uh, intensity rim with low signal intensity in the lesion post contrast we can see there is a mild peripheral eccentric nodular enhancement so the diagnosis is toxoplasmosis the next is cryptococcal infections it is a caused by the cryptococcal neoformants and encapsulated yeast like fungus <clears throat> the imaging findings may be consist with the marine encephalitis crypto cryptococcomas uh gelatinous pseudocyst or hydrocephalus gelatinous pseudocyst are iso intense to csf on mr images and primarily located in the midbrain in a basal ganglia no enhancement is noted in the post gadolinium uh, images cryptococcus present as a masses of the low single uh, signal intensities on t1 w images and a high signal on t2 weighted images and enhancement of the contrast admission is also seen in the cryptococcal infections so in the mri we can see there is a uh, on t2 and flare we can see there are multiple small lesions are seen in the bilateral basal ganglia which appears hyper intense on t2 weighted and hypo intense on flare images now on the uh, t1 with uh, post contrast we can see there is a peripheral nodule enhancement so with given history we can see there is a uh, we maybe exclude, exclude the other diagnosis and we can say it is a cryptococcal infections the next is tuberculosis tuberculosis is most common cns tuberculosis is an aids patient results from the reactivation of the previous infection of the or rarely from the newly acquired infections the common intracranial manifestation of the tb include meningitis tuberculoma granulomas abscess cerebral ischemia and infections fewer basal exudates or greater number of acid fast bacilli bacilli occur in the brain parenchyma and meningitis in the patient with the hiv infections so on a t2 weighted and post contrast study we can see there is a meningeal enhancement on the post contrast images uh my uh, this is a pure case of clear case classic case of uh, ring en enhancement lesions which is seen tuberculoma ring enhancement lesions which is seen in the post contrast study this is axial and this is sagittal sections uh, so we can clearly say it is tuberculomas so another diag differentials with the ring enhancement lesions like this is a ncc but on the basis of the clinical correlation we can uh, differentiate it on with the spectro we can differentiate it from the spectro mr spectro okay. so the summary and conclusion with my topic is hiv related neurological disease is classified into a direct complication and indirect complication the development of the neurological complication depends on the variety of the factors including therapy with the antiretroviral drugs and the patient's overall degree of immunosuppression the common intracranial infection of hiv positive patient include hiv encephalitis progressive progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy tuberculosis toxoplasmosis and cryptococcal infections knowledge of the imaging findings associated with the various infection agents that involves the cns uh, cns in hiv infected patients is important for gu guiding the treatment differentiate from the infection pathology so my topic is uh, over uh, thank you for the listening